The September 2024 Watchtower has just been posted on JW.org and contains quite a few doctrinal changes that have to do with the recent change in understanding that people can still be saved till the last minute, deep in the Great Tribulation right before the Battle of Armageddon. Unlike the previous position that Jehovah's Witnesses are doing a separated work, now with a door-to-door ministry. So that's gone. That's out of the window. Now, that I have, now I have to say that the August 2024 Watchtower that was briefly uploaded and then removed from JW.org, I did a video about this, by the governing body is still missing in action, apparently. One has to question what big changes the Watchtower contains, this Watchtower contains. Of course, I will update you as soon as there is a change. Now, before I delve into these new changes, I want you to know I will be discontinuing my website jwupdates.com and I will be moving all my content over to Locals. So as always, there is a link to every article at the description area of this video and every other video. And if you would like to read any recent documents, articles or announcements or articles I've written about doctrine, you will find everything on jwupdates.com dot locals dot com and now back in the changes of the Watchtower September twenty twenty four. Now under the study article thirty eight with the theme Are you heeding the warnings? They are considering three of Jesus' parables and they are revising once again their understanding towards them to feed their agenda and the first one we consider today is the parable of the ten virgins that can be found in Matthew 25, 1 to 13. So before we consider the changes, first let's read this account so we know what we're talking about. Then it says, Then the kingdom of the heavens may be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet their bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five of them were discreet. For the foolish took the lamps, but took no oil with them, whereas the discreet took oil in their flasks along with their lamps. While the bridegroom was delaying, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Right in the middle of the night, there was a shout, Here is the bridegroom, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and put their lamps in order. The foolish said to the discreet, Give us some of your oil because our lamps are about to go out. The discreet answered saying, Perhaps there may not be enough for both of us and you. Go instead to those who sell it and buy some for yourselves. While they were going off to buy it, the bridegroom came. The virgins, who were ready, went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the rest of the virgins also came, saying, Sir, sir, open to us. In answer, he said, I tell you the truth. I do not know you. Keep on the watch, therefore, because you know neither the day nor the hour. So here's what they say in paragraphs 6 and 7 about this parable now. In the parable of the virgins, Jesus spoke of ten virgins who went out to meet a bridegroom. They all hoped to accompany the bridegroom to his marriage feast. Jesus described five of them as discreet and the others five as foolish. The discreet virgins were prepared and vigilant. They were ready to wait for the bridegroom as long as needed, even if he arrived late at night. Thus, they bought oil lamps to provide light in the dark. They even brought extra oil in case the bridegroom should delay. So they were prepared to keep their lamps burning. And that's based in Matthew 25, 6-10. When the bridegroom arrived, the discreet virgins went in with him to the wedding feast. In like manner, I know it Christians, we have proved ready by remaining vigilant and faithful 
until the coming of Christ will be just worthy of joining the bridegroom. Jesus is his heavenly, Jesus in his heavenly kingdom. What of the five foolish virgins though? In paragraph seven we read, what happened to the five foolish virgins and why? Unlike the discreet virgins, the five foolish, foolish virgins once were not ready when the bridegroom arrived. Their lamps were about to go out and they brought no extra oil with them. When they learned that the bridegroom would soon arrive, they had to go and buy oil. They had not to return to when the bridegroom came. At that time, the virgins who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast and the door was shut. Later, when the foolish virgins came back and wanted to enter, the bridegroom told them, I do not know you, Matthew 25, 11 and 12. Those virgins had not been prepared to wait for the bridegroom as long as necessary. What is the lesson for anointed ones? So that's where it ends, parts of six and seven, and I don't find anything wrong with this explanation so far. But here comes the changes in paragraph eight. Jesus was not foretelling that there would be two classes of the anointed ones. One that was prepared to wait until the end of the system of things and one that was not. Rather, he was explaining what would happen to anointed ones if they were not prepared to endure faithfully to the end. In that case, they would not receive their reward. That is sobering. Whether our hope is heavenly or earthly, we all should take to heart the warning from the parable of the virgins. Each of us must keep on the watch and be prepared, ready to endure to the end. So here's paragraph eight. And what has been the understanding in the past? They, the wise virgins, were the 144,000, including the governing body, and the foolish virgins were Babylon the Great and its Christendom. Go back and read publications from the 70s and the 80s. They believed in two specific classes of people as they did with other parables. But now they see this parable as predict predicting different outcomes apparently and not different groups of people. Let me say that again. Parables predict outcomes and not specific groups of people. This has been the correct understanding all along all along by all Christian scholars, unlike cults that have, they have explained parables. But Jehovah's Witnesses for the past 100 years, they have been wrongly using Jesus' parables to promote themselves as the only group on earth that is the only true religion, apparently. This new understanding puts a dynamite in the power structure of the religion. And I will explain to you why. Because that brings to mind another parable that is based on this new understanding that based on this new understanding has to be revised also the parable of the faithful and discreet slave that you all know well which can be found in matthew 24 and verses 45 to 51 where it says who released the faithful and discreet slave whom his master appointed over his domestics to give them their food at the proper time Happy is that, is that slave if his master on, came, on, on coming finds him doing so. Truly I say to you, he will appoint him over all his belongings. But if ever that evil slave says in his heart, my master is delaying and he starts to beat his fellow slaves and to eat and drink with the confirmed drunkards, the master of that slave will come on a day that he does not expect and in an hour that he doesn't know and he will punish him with the greatest severity and will assign him his place with the hypocrites. That is where his whipping and the gnashing of his teeth will be. So applying the same understanding, the new understanding apparently, right? These verses about the faithful and discreet slave apply to different outcomes 
and not to a specific group of people, namely the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses, that have used these verses to enforce their authority over millions of Jehovah's Witnesses for over a hundred years and impose their authority. This is massive. Are we to expect then that they will soon drop this main teaching to the one of the faithful and discreet slave? Well, anything is possible, but we will have to wait and see. By the way, I know, and you know, which outcome they fulfill in this parable. The one of the evil slave, right? When they felt their master was delaying, having falsely preached that he came invisibly in 1914 and made everyone wait for over a hundred years for this system to end, many people started waking up and complaining instead of treating them as brothers and sisters, as should the discreet slave, they started beating them up, disfellowshipping them and driving them away from their congregations and from their families too. Instead of behaving as loving shepherds, they demanded blind obedience. And then they started eating and drinking with their confirmed drunkards, the United Nations, that they had previously dis described as the beast of revelation. But now they became an NGO and they started promoting their programs and agendas at the forefront of JW.org and their magazines. They fit this profile of the evil slave like a glove, don't they? Why this change though? And why now? Well, since they announced last year during their annual meeting, the big doctrinal changes that they now think everyone gets saved up to the Battle of Armageddon. And therefore, the separating work is not something that is done from the Jehovah's Witness, but Christ. All other teachings including this parable of the ten virgins, have to be realigned. They have to be revised with this new understanding. But I think there is more to it, and it comes to one word. Cowards! You see, for over a hundred years, based on a false understanding that Jesus came invisibly in 1914, and therefore we were living in the last days, they weren't out proclaiming boldly that they were the only true religion and everybody else was Babylon the Great, right? Do you remember that? But now that we're actually getting near to the end, the actual end, right? And the nations are waking up to the fact that they are a cult and not a Christian denomination and they're going to lose money and funding. They want to backtrack and blend in with the background, with the rest of Babylon the Great, doing videos about Jesus Christ at the recent convention and write watchtowers about him and pretending it was never about us versus them. It is just about different outcomes that Jesus was talking about all along. What a sham. What cowards. Now back to the parable of the uh, ten virgins that they abused it to its understanding for their own ends. Is there ever a correct or a correct understanding of this parable? Yes, there is. There is a more accurate understanding of this parable when you break down its main aspects. Now let's see. What does the oil symbolize? Of course, it represents the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, we find that the anointing with oil was representative of the coming of the Holy Spirit upon a person. For instance, the prophet Samuel used oil to anoint David as king of Israel. We are told the following in the book of Samuel. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. So that's based on 1 Samuel 16, 13. Of course, there are many other verses to this effect, but I'll let you do your own research on this one. Also, the ten verses, ten verses what do they symbolize? All Christians, and not just a privileged few that self-proclaim to be the faithful and discreet slave in upstate New York. The Bible is quite clear that all Christians receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon baptism. They were never two classes. 
We all draw from the same supply of oil as Christians, whether you like it or not. There's a few verses here, very interesting. 1 John 2.20 But you have been anointed by the Holy Spirit, and you all have knowledge. 1 John 2.27 But the anointing that you received from him abides in you. That who to you? Every, every, every Christian, right? And you have no need that anyone should teach you. We will return on this verse later. Again, there are many more verses to this effect, but I'll let you again do your own research. Now, here is the key of understanding the rest of the parable. If you get this right, you get the whole parable right. Who are the merchants, the suspicious merchants, the sellers of oil in this parable? Go back to the parable and read. Nowhere does the parable say that the wise virgins ever purchased oil from sellers of merchants. That is because the Holy Spirit is a given and is not sold, and therefore they rely to, to the Holy Spirit all their lives, and they have enough to last them during the last days. Remember, you get the Holy Spirit when you get baptized. So when the night comes and the last days come, when the lights of the system of things go out, they will be prepared. Whereas the foolish virgins, they rely in the supply of fake snake oil from self-processed oil merchants like the governing body. When the last days come, and they haven't come yet, when the night comes, these snake oil merchants will close shop. They will disappear, leaving behind all these millions of Jehovah's Witnesses who, instead of relying on the actual supply of the Holy Spirit, on their own, their Holy Spirit, which is free, right? Their own free supply of Holy Spirit. They instead gorged on fake oil all their lives sold by the New York governing body mafia. They do this right now, right? They have started changing all the doctrines to blend in with the rest of Christendom so they don't get sued or classed as a cult and lose their money in Europe. You've seen that, right? The lesson here is this. Stop relying on others to fill your spiritual lamp. Start relying in the supply of Holy Spirit that Jesus left for all of us as helper after his departure. Notice also how when the foolish virgins came back and started banging on the door, nowhere does the Bible say that they came back with the, uh, the right oil. How could they? There's no one around to give it to them while they were going off to buy it in the, br the bridegroom came. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast and the door was shut. Afterwards, the rest of the virgins also came saying, Sir, sir, open to us. In answer, he said, I tell you the truth. I do not know you. You don't want that happening to you, do you? So here you have it. This is the first change that they apply on this parable of the ten virgins. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I will also provide some understanding in the next two uh, parables that they have to revised in September 2024 20, Watch Tower. And as I said, you can find now this, all these articles on my new uh, website, jwupdates.locals.com. Uh, the jwupdates.com has been discontinued because I want to create more like a, a forum for people to come and, and, and share articles or, or interact with me. And um, let me know what you think. And as always, I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you.